Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Midwest Whitetail. You know, the team has had an awesome late season this year. And on last week's episode, we showed you guys my family series of successful hunts over Christmas break. My two oldest daughters and my wife were all able to take great bucks with the crossbow. And then right when I thought the late season couldn't get any better, I was able to have a successful hunt on New Year's Day. Um, actually, the biggest buck that I have trail camera picks up this year is my first sit with the muzzleloader in hand on a 50 acre farm I have down in Southern Iowa. I didn't have a lot of confidence this buck would show up, but I wanted to try him at least a couple times this late season. And uh, it was really cool to be able to go down there and, and find success. Our second hunt this week is with Cody, one of our interns. You know, and I, we had a great intern class this year. They've all been working really, really hard for us here at 41 North and Midwest Whitetail. They help us out a bunch. And when they get a little bit of free time, they like to get out and hunt just like the rest of us. And Cody was able to get out on public land and take a great buck with a muzzleloader. For those of you guys that are interested in the internship, we're gonna be opening up our application cycle for this year here pretty soon. So just keep your eyes peeled on the website and on all of our social media. Josh is gonna be getting that out here pretty soon and we're looking forward to next year's class already. We hope you guys enjoy this week's show. southern Iowa it's about 50 acres this piece and I've got a couple of acres of uh, standing corn I've put some cell cameras out here earlier in the year we did one hunt out here and uh, we've got a couple really good bucks I got a new buck that showed up this last couple days ago which is a great looking deer and then that deer that we talked about early in the year is just a real heavy six by six with some extra points so two really cool deer We'll see if one of them shows up tonight. We're in the redneck, we've got a strong north wind. Fingers crossed this blind sets up awesome for late season. I mean, this little field butts up against a huge track of timber. And so it just sets up really, really well for this. If you got the food, this kind of weather, really harsh weather, it's like 25 degrees right now with a wind chill of around 12 to 14. So having food this time of year is really key. And uh, we're looking forward to the set. Thank you. 
since December 14th or so. I've got history with him. He's been on this um, farm in previous years. This year he made a nice jump. He's a mainframe six by six, real heavy, split brows, kickers. I mean, just a giant of a deer. But that really nice 10 come out that I've got pictures of a few days ago. He looks like a high 150s, 160 type class deer. But there's two bigger ones. And I thought I didn't want to burn my muzzle attack on that deer just yet. And uh, lo and behold, even though I had a low confidence in this buck showing up tonight, we spotted him come out of that big timber. And uh, he took a while to jump the fence and come in, but he ended up coming all the way in to about 130 yards. I waited till he turned broadside and it looked like I made a good shot on him. He ran over to the edge of the timber over there and he, he seemed to want to go down, but it looked like he made it down into the timber. So. We're gonna get packed up and uh, go get the Kubota and come back in here and uh, check out the blood trail. I'm pumped. We've got great blood from the point of impact all the way across the field to where we saw him stand. This is where he dived down into the timber. I can't imagine he made it in here very far. He stand right there. <laughs> Starting to get a little bit worried. You see him right there? I don't see him yet. Oh. Well, what an awesome way to bring in the new year. This was my target buck for uh, late season this year. And my primary goal was to get the wife and kids their deer. And we were able to do that over Christmas break, as you guys saw. Now I was talking to my wife last night about getting out. She said, the weather's too cruddy. Why don't you go? And so Chase and I made the move on this deer. And I was a little worried he got shot during second shotgun just because he wasn't showing up. But, um, you know, you never know. It's a perfect example of how the cameras don't tell everything. Um, I've got four cameras on the corners of this three acre food plot. And, you know, I get pictures from it, obviously, but there's plenty of deer. Like last night, we had 50 deer out there and most of them were avoiding the cameras. The real story though, is the size of this farm. I mean, it's, it's 52 acres and I bought it uh, as an additional place to hunt it's only like a half a mile away from my old uh, cabin farm that I sold. Ended up selling that farm to buy this farm, our home farm where we're out taking pictures today, but I kept the little piece that was next to it 
just because I love the way it's set up for late season to give me an additional late season option. And it is just in the heart of thousands of acres of big timber, which is fairly rare to find in Iowa. Lots and lots of deer and lots of great bucks. And uh, like I said, it doesn't set up super well for rut hunting, but it's just a gold mine for late season and uh, works to a T. You know, I left three acres of standing corn and that gives you a great opportunity to capitalize on some of these bucks that you wouldn't really otherwise have a chance to hunt. As always, we really appreciate you guys. You know, 2020 has been hard on a lot of us, both at work and at home and school and everything else. And um, hunting's always been a release for me. I mean, I call it tree therapy. I love getting out and spending time in nature and it's just something that kind of resets things and helps center your mind and brings some peace, so to speak. And uh, you know, we love capturing all this on video and bringing it to you guys and we just really appreciate the support. So. And we'll see you guys next week. Thanks for watching Midwest Whitetail. Looks like there's a lot of good movement in here. As you can tell, I just got to this cornfield that I come back to hunt here. I probably have maybe a 10 minute walk left. And I'm gonna pick myself a tree and set up for the evening. I'm pretty late today. This walk was a little longer than I thought. The sun's starting to actually break through the clouds and set on the horizon, so I think by the time I get in the stand, It'll be pretty, pretty nice out. Well, it's the evening hunter, December 28th. I'm out here in some Iowa public land for late muzzleloader. We're running out of days here real quick. So I've kind of come out to one of the public land pieces I know has some food. There's a big standing cornfield in front of me and some turnips. I bumped a few does getting in here. I don't think I burgered it too bad. We only got maybe an hour left until dark. It's a little bit of a walk back in here. Who knows, anything could happen at this point. Cross our fingers. Just made it up to the truck here with light fading fast as you could tell i decided just uh to back out not push the deer and get the crew together and we're gonna go back in now and start looking for blood and hopefully he didn't go too far <laughs> he's right there oh what like 60 yards across the creek oh. This buck. <laughs> Iowa public land. I cannot believe it. Crap. 
crazy. Wow, what a tank. I couldn't be more excited with this buck. Iowa public land, truly, truly a great buck. What a stud. It's been such a grind this year between bow season and, and close encounters and I just couldn't get it done. And now I get out here in late muzzleloading and I found a really solid food source and that was really the key tonight. I've seen so many deer and I've seen them coming from a little ways off and I was getting ready. I had, I had so many deer around me. I, I really couldn't move and self filming by myself. It, no leaves on the trees was just incredibly difficult. Light was fading extremely fast, but he made his way all the way in very, very slowly. But once he come up, he got within bow range. Can't believe that. Once he got within range, when this buck stepped out, I knew instantly this is the one I wanted to wrap my tag around here in Iowa. Deer season's officially closed here in Iowa, uh, but as you can tell by today's episode being a midweek release, we're still backed up on content. It's been an incredible stretch of late season hunting for our team. On deck is the story of the Big Ten, and I really can't wait to share that one with you guys. Uh, it's been an incredible journey and chase for the last couple of years. I learned so much just chasing that one specific deer, and I uh, couldn't have drawn up a better ending, really. To kill him on the ground in a ghillie suit, uh, kind of beating him at his own game was such a fitting ending to that story. So Josh and I will be working hard over the next few days, put that together, and hopefully do it justice. So you can expect to see that next week. Uh, we appreciate you guys joining and really all year long for the support here on Middle Swite Tail.